You know, I hate to say it, but I think I may got the holiday blues going on. What if we can reduce that by 35% if you act now, today? <laughs> is there a time limit? Flash sale. Okay. Okay. So at the, today's thing is gratitude, supposedly gratitude can reduce depression by 35%. That's a pretty big number. Now, I don't know what labs are running these tests, <laughs> but I could see in my head Frank asking John, how how grateful do you feel right now? Or how <laughs> depressed do you feel right now? Okay, about, about 80% maybe. Okay, say this word and then tell me how you feel. How, how do they measure these things? An insane person's like, yeah, I'm about 70% depressed. Right. So anyway, um, today we're talking about the ripple effect of small acts of gratitude. Mm. And so uh, do you sometimes feel like small good deeds may not matter that much? I mean, yeah. There's, there's <clears throat> definitely moments where you, I think we all feel like we do something small, maybe it doesn't get recognized. Sure. Or we kind of play it off like, eh, it's just a, such a small thing. Who's, who's really benefiting from this? Um, in the long run or kind of thing. We put, I think as men, we put a lot of stock in these big flashy, uh, you know, showcases of sure. doing anything, whether it's gratitude or love or these big things. And it's usually the small things that are often much more received on a daily basis. I know sure. my wife's uh, love language is gifts. And we've had the, we had this conversation very early on in our marriage because I was like, well, I can't be buying you like really expensive gifts. And she was like, even if you're just thinking about me and get me like a candy bar, that shows me that you're thinking about me and that you love me. Right. And so it's, it's a small stuff like that that sometimes has bigger meaning than just saying, well, like all those like commercials around the holidays of like, oh, man, I got you a new car. It's in the driveway. Now we're in really far in debt. So <laughs> I got you a dog. Great. I got you a GMC that's $78,000. <laughs> awesome. Um, one, I always, always kind of always chuckled when – Gary Chapman, here's your plug for the week. Um, <laughs> who doesn't like getting gifts? Right. Like, is that is there a person on the planet that doesn't have a little bit of that love language? Um, but I do think that we think that small deeds don't do very much, but because we're like those sweeping grand gestures. Mm -hmm. But we do we have opportunity to do so many small gestures. Mm -hmm. Big life events don't come around that often. It's the small things that happen daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, uh, at a hundred times the scale of big gestures. And yeah. so I think we overlook those small acts. And it says, um, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Yeah. And so I guess it depends on if you don't, if you take that for granted, if you mm -hmm. don't say it. Uh, maybe it is wasted, but uh, I think there's um, opportunities for us to appreciate those small gestures because they happen so often. Yeah, I mean, I think once you start ingraining those smaller gestures into your daily life too, I think it really plays a part on how others are, not even the person who's receiving that that thankful act or whatever. Because, like, I know that for me, like, you guys brought us up to always open the door for like mom. And then so I, I always open the door for my wife now. And we were on vacation with another couple from our, our Bible study. And I happened to just open the door for my wife and got out. And so the other wife turned to her husband and was like, why don't you do that for me? And so he started doing the rest of the trip and now he's doing it. Mm -hmm. And now she feels very grateful for that. And so the small things that like for me, I don't really think about it too much, but it's, even outside the sphere of just me and my wife and how it affects directly, it impacts those people around that see it mm -hmm. and then can, you know, be a ripple effect for them to be grateful for their wives, showcasing it something for them that you're like, oh, well, I didn't even think about that. You know, it's such a small thing. Why would I think about opening the door for you? But it meant something to the wife and now the husband does it for her. It is weird. I've been doing that for about 25 plus years. Uh, it's not like I didn't do that before you guys came along, mm -hmm. but I made a conscious effort to do that every single time. Mm -hmm. And so it took mom a little bit to walk up to a door and she stands. Like if I'm <clears throat> two feet behind her kind of thing, walk up to a door and stand. 
I'm going to do an opening. Uh, it's not that she can't open it for herself. Mm -hmm. It is um, letting her know that she is cherished by me. Um, and this is a small act that I can do that I enjoy doing. Yeah. The number of times people have, you know, acted like I discovered a new planet <laughs> or <laughs> oh, he's juggling chainsaws. Um, it's really strange. So if you listen to this here, here's a little challenge for you. For the next, for the rest of the year, open every door that your wife and you approach. Let her know you're going to do this and ask her to wait a second. You park the car, turn it off, walk around, open the door, let her out. Vice versa, the car, store, wherever. And after, once you get into a habit, it becomes thing you don't even, you know, mm -hmm. you just natural. But watch how many times someone comments on that or gives you a look like, wow, that's so unusual. Anyway, speaking of small things. So the Bible story of the widow's might shows a small act that can lead to big things. So Luke 21, 1 through 4 says, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the offering box. And he saw the poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he said, truly, I tell you, this poor woman has put in more than all of them. For they all contributed out of their abundance but she out of her poverty and put all she had to live on. And so uh, the woman gives two coins, but Jesus said she gave the most. How do you, how do you, what do you think he meant by that? Well, I think it goes back to our conversation about with the heart, right? Like the, the acts and how they are perceived. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's rich people like, well, I got, I don't know, 10,000 gold coins back back home. I can chuck a thousand in here and sure. be fine for the rest of my life. Whereas this woman's like, I only have this. Right. And so I'm going to give my all to God. Mm. And I think that goes back to our previous weeks talking about if your heart is not in the right place when you say thank you or when you're trying to practice gratitude, it is hollow. Right. And it won't, all these stats that we're using of, you know, depression and health and, and you know, mood and all that kind of stuff, those won't even take place if it's just i'm checking off a box i said sure. my thank yous and i'm moving on kind of thing <clears throat> and the same thing happens you know like the door thing if you're just checking it off you know be intentional about it and you'll see that improves probably your mood probably more likely your wife's mood and that will help you in your mood but happy life <laughs> happy life but yeah, i think heart i mean you just talk a lot about the intentions of the heart right i mean mm. when a man thinks of murder He's committed murder in his heart, right? Sure. Intentionality is huge in the Bible repeatedly. Sure. And so I think that's doubly so for thank, being thankful and choosing gratitude in these moments where I'm sure she was probably really thinking through, these are my two coins. Mm. What am I going to do next week? And still thinking, you know what? I'm going to be thankful for what God gave me and give back to him. Well, this makes me think of Cain and Abel, mm. you know, um, and what started that road to murder the first murder um, Cain brought some fruits mm -hmm. Abel brought the first fruits and God pointed that out and that was for a reason for our lesson of do you give out of maybe a sacrifice or something important to you or do you just give like you said out of abundance that if you know, you're, you're, you know, swimming through rooms full of gold coins. I don't think... <laughs> like Scrooge McDuck. Right, Scrooge McDuck. I don't think that you're missing a couple of gold coins. But if you are just getting by, you are definitely feeling those gold coins. And so those small acts in daily life saying thanks. Let's just take it from gold coins to gratitude. Saying thanks can make a sad person happy. Mm -hmm. Um I know <clears throat> we've seen commercials about this where one person smiles at another mm -hmm. or says thank you or good morning, whatever mm -hmm. the thing was, and all of a sudden it kind of ripples through the commercial of people that that person you just said you know, good morning to, mm -hmm. 
then runs across someone else, and they say the same thing. I don't think you notice like 10 people that have kind of, it's rippled through that may have changed their perspective yeah. in their mood. And so have you ever had a situation where you diffused a situation with maybe a thank you or a kind word? Um, nothing's really coming to mind exactly like diffusing something. Now I have tried to, uh, implement this, this thing. This is more, this is a side effect of gratitude, but more for my own benefit of like, I want to see what happens. I often, if we drive up to like a fast food or if we're checking out something, um, I will ask the person before they even have a chance to give them the spiel of, you know, whatever I say, hi, how are you doing today? And you just see the look of sheer confusion on their face. Because, like, <laughs> it's one of those phrases that often we just say, hey, how are you doing today? And you say, great, and you move on. Right. But if you, like, look them in the face and you're, like, <clears throat> very intentional how you pronounce it. And, you know, say, I hope you're having a good day. Thank you so much. And then you move on. Right. And I've noticed that sometimes, like, if I'm talking to someone, I just, you know, thank you for your time today. I appreciate the help. The tone changes drastically. Of, sure. From someone who may be having a rough day, at, you know, on the phone lines or whatever, to they understand that I appreciate the help and they're much more willing to w walk me through whatever I'm trying to get solved or get help on or whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that those kind of situations are some light in those people's days just because I know I have plenty of friends who work in retail or phone call services and just the barrage of people who call and scream, you know, obscenities at them. I'm sure they're, you know, on the front lines and needing some gratitude. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll save that for our second segment. Uh, the little story I have about that, but our verse for this segment is first Thessalonians five eighteen. Where it says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God and Jesus Christ for you. Hmm. You sure doesn't say give thanks in some circumstances? Uh, no, I believe that says all circumstances. What version you got there? <laughs> There's the version problem. Okay. All right. So stay tuned for uh, my story on uh, the little things on our second segment. Uncommon, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Wilson Technology Group. At Wilson Technology Group, we're not just an IT vendor. We're your trusted business partner delivering exceptional support, innovative solutions, and peace of mind. One call, one team. All your tech issues resolved. In common, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Viking Mergers. Sell your business? Viking Mergers and Acquisitions can help. With 25 plus years of experience and 800 successful sales, we're experts in securing maximum value. Get your free business valuation now at vikingmergers.com or call 866-592-9467. All right, welcome back to segment two. So uh, our Did You Know says, showing gratitude spreads like a ripple in a pond. And so kind of a segue into my story. Uh, so during COVID, people were crazy when they're out in public. And so um, every time Mom and I went to the store, not every time, at least 75% of the time, when I thought the person wouldn't get freaked out, uh, if the person was working, I could tell they were just like going through the motions. I would just thank them for them doing their job. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to thank you for doing this. We all need this, and we couldn't do this without you. So just want to kind of give you a little bit of encouragement and tell you thank you, you know. And you would think that person would be like, would perk up and say, man, you know what? Thanks. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. You you just thought I walked by and said, water is wet and kept walking because they were just like no reaction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I get it. You spend, you know, it's like your eight hour day. And if you're dealing with the public, that's a challenge on its own. Yeah. But I was hoping that... And maybe it did show up later on mm -hmm. in that person's life, but I was hoping that that encouragement would ripple into his day or her day, and then that person may carry it forward to someone else. Mm. Um, did you 
ever run across someone that maybe you tried to interact with during COVID? Uh, I mean, few and far between. Most of them were like <clears throat> people who would deliver groceries, something like that, um, right. or, you know, drive through. We lived in drive throughs for a while there. Sure. <laughs> but sure. Um, I know oftentimes, like, whenever we would thank, it was it would go one of two routes, either when you thank them, you know, or uh, like even to like ask how you're doing kind of thing. They're just so desensitized mm-hmm. as, you know, um, working real retail. But, um, you know, oftentimes, even if, say, it's a, a five to one ratio, you know, five times they don't react, but that one time, that one time that that person, you know, is, well, thank you for asking. I really appreciate yeah. that or whatever. And that makes me feel good that I've made their day. Sure. And the funny part about it is whenever you, you know, encourage someone else or give some gratitude towards someone else and, you know, they reciprocate that in some capacity, whether just showing appreciation or whatever, that impacts you just as much as you impacted their life. So this is kind of sure. like, you know, the echo chamber of like, well, you've, really made their day now now you feel good because you made their day and then you go and take that and move on to the next person and just that's the kind of that ripple effect that we see as you know just one small just a thank you right just thank you and appreciate you kind of thing well you've probably seen or heard of like you know paying it forward you Mm. you pull up at you know say the go-to (laughs) chick-fil-a right the lord's chicken the lord's chicken and that person says, uh, oh, well, your meal has been paid by the person in front of you. And so you proceed to do your order. And then you, like, you check your mirror to make sure you're not in front of, a, like, you know, a, a cargo van <laughs> full of people. You're like Kids strapped to the roof. You know, how many kids? Seven, eight, nine. Oh, that was so very nice of that <laughs> person. And thank you. Have a great day. Or you may say, yeah, well, I can return the favor and do the person behind me mm-hmm. as well. So I'm not quite sure of the logistics of all that. They like, you know, stay here while he places his order and then you have to okay the cost, all that. But you could see that that's been around for a while that we have heard of. The concept been around since the beginning of yeah. you know, time. So um, and there, there are ways that we can maybe – kind of remember that, like mm-hmm. we're trying to remember those type things, you know, maybe making note of um, certain moments may be beneficial. Like you wouldn't want to, like John at the grocery store and I engaged over mustard, <laughs> you know, last year. But <clears throat> maybe there's someone in your family that um, just going through some hard times and you're encouraging them. Yeah, just maybe jot it down, maybe just kind of mm. – Remember that I think, in a weird way, people use Facebook, and they'll post something, saying, "This is for my memory in the future." Mm-hmm. It could be, "I we went here on vacation," or see these gas prices. <laughs> I'll remember that back, you know, twelve months from now. So, um, a way to remember it could be write it down, share it with someone else. Uh, so. Uh, our our verse here is Colossians 3.15. And it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts and be thankful. Mm-hmm. And I love that scripture fills in the gaps for us, you know, because God knew that what he left out, we would not seek to fill in. <laughs> you know, like if he stopped right there... Let the peace of Christ rule your hearts. And I'll be upset about it the entire time. <laughs> and yeah, it could have been, well, okay, that, that sounds great. But and be thankful. I mean, it's a sentence onto itself. Mm-hmm. And so um, I love that he knows us intimately uh, to the point of we need to be told sometimes mm-hmm. to be thankful. And so uh, that leads us to our challenge section, Joshua. Yep. So we have been having challenges uh, for every podcast that we just trying to put ourselves in the mindset of being grateful mm-hmm. uh, during this season. And so uh, as we've kind of gone through each week, we've mentioned about keeping a grateful journal, just writing down things that you're grateful for, uh, how that's blessed you, bless other people and, and vice versa. And hold on a second. Let me jump in real quick for for the guy out there who's like picturing unicorns and flowers on a grateful journal. <laughs> you don't have to have something that um, was handmade or whatever. It doesn't need to be even like you made out of wood or cast iron either. 
you just take your phone out and create a note mm-hmm. and jot down things. I know our family's big on that uh, about either people or places, uh, important things. I keep notes on my phone, and this would be a great place to do that. So. I have an entire note on my phone dedicated to my wife, likes, dislikes, mm-hmm. favorite foods. Like It's like a cheat sheet. That's a little freebie for you. If you want to do that, write down your favorite, your wife's favorite stuff. It'll save you in the future. Um, <laughs> but back to our, our challenge for this week. Uh, we are going to take a moment every day this week and write down a one small act of kindness that you can either do or was done for you. Mm. Um, just to keep that memory alive and yeah. keep building in this uh, this grateful journal that hopefully once we finish this series and we move past Thanksgiving, you'll keep this in your mind and maybe even keep up with the journal. Oh, I'm not moving past Thanksgiving. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna, just going to stop there at the old uh, turkey table. As soon as I eat the, uh, eat the turkey, I'm out. Um, but yeah, so just writing down the one act of kindness every, every day of the week, maybe how it made you feel or if the other mm. person kind of reflected on how that made them feel. Um, and just kind of like making summaries at the end of the end of the week, just of how that impacted for impacted your day to day. Cause sure. as we kind of like write these, these events down, um, and think back on them more fondly, I think that we realize that there is more kindness going around than we were aware of, or we right. take for granted. Sure. Um, and so really calling light to those things helps you keep them in the forefront of your mind because, Oftentimes, especially as guys, we take, uh, we assume a lot of the time. Mm. 